and also uh, for putting this meeting uh, together uh, in the first place. Um, you know, it's, it's described as the, the first international conference on uh, founder populations and less than the Jewish genome. Uh, but many of you may know uh, the meeting that was held in 1961 uh, in Jerusalem, uh, which was uh, about the genetics of migrant and isolate uh, populations, uh, genetic uh, relationships, genetic differentiation uh, among uh, groups in Israel uh, that uh, uh, Professor uh, Levy referred to uh, as the natural experiment uh, of the ingathering of populations uh, uh, in Israel. Uh, and uh, in preparing for this talk uh, and looking at the conference volume uh, from the 1961 meeting, uh, it was really interesting to see how many of the themes uh, that we'll be speaking about in the next uh, few days about uh, founder mutations and uncovering uh, genetics of disease uh, and demographic aspects of uh, uh, small uh, isolated uh, populations uh, were really in evidence in the topics uh, of the meeting uh, that were discussed uh, 55 years ago. Uh, so uh, uh, with that uh, background, uh, my uh, topic is on uh, runs of homozygosity uh, and consanguinity, uh, really fundamental uh, aspects of human genetics that, that trace back to uh, some of the earliest uh, studies uh, in human genetics, some of the earliest uh, understandings of heredity. Uh, so uh, in a, a pedigree, uh, when uh, uh, genetic material is transmitted uh, from uh, parents to offspring, uh, if we have consanguineous marriages, uh, those uh, marriages can generate uh, long stretches of the genome uh, that are homozygous. So imagine this uh, particular uh, couple. Uh, the uh, father has uh, two uh, chromosomes here, uh, shown uh, red and yellow. Uh, the mother, uh, orange uh, and purple. And of course, in the offspring, uh, each uh, offspring gets a, a recombinant chromosome uh, from uh, each of uh, the parents. Uh, with different uh, uh, recombination of different recombinations uh, in different offspring, propagating uh, those chromosomes through the pedigree. Uh, if we reach a consanguineous marriage, here's the first cousin marriage, then uh, the offspring of that consanguineous marriage, uh, a marriage between our relatives, uh, can inherit the same piece of genome identically by descent from both parents. Here, this uh, red piece of genome is a run of homozygosity that's been inherited twice. Uh, once uh, through the paternal line and once through the maternal line, all the way to the same uh, great grandfather. So, uh, so consanguinity uh, generates uh, these long runs of homozygosity. Uh, it's not the only process that generates uh, runs of homozygosity. Uh, another uh, uh, phenomenon rele relevant to uh, founder uh, populations uh, is uh, that the nature of the population history. Uh, whether or not current marriages uh, are consanguineous can also uh, generate uh, runs of homozygosity. And uh, this is a schematic of ancient human migrations outward from Africa, where in an ancestral population, you can imagine that there was uh, diversity in the chromosomes that were present in an ancestral African population. Through the course of the migrations, uh, sequentially outward from Africa, uh, some of that diversity was lost uh, in each of these uh, founding events uh, that represent uh, a scheme for how we can imagine ancient human uh, migrations took place. Uh, so that the farther away the population is from the African starting point, the lower the amount of uh, genetic diversity and the greater the probability that a pair of chromosomes uh, will be identical by descent, that there will be uh, a person who inherits uh, two pieces of genome that are identical uh, because the, the inheritance has come from the same ancestor, the same individual that uh, uh, is an ancestor that made one of the migrations um, in that population's past. Now, there's a lot uh, more time separating uh, 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 current populations from ancient migrations uh, than current populations uh, and uh, consanguineous uh, marriages a few generations back. So the stretches of homozygosity due to ancient migrations are shorter uh, in uh, uh, these cases than in cases uh, with uh, populations with a high degree of consanguinity. So uh, our first study of uh, runs of homozygosity looked at a set of uh, worldwide populations. 
Um, was uh, led, led by uh, Trevor uh, Pemberton, who's now at the University of Manitoba, studying uh, exactly some of the isolated uh, populations uh, in Canada uh, that Michael Hayden uh, referred to. Uh, and, um, uh, and what uh, we did in this study was uh, we measured uh, runs of homozygosity in each of these different populations, uh, partitioning the runs of homozygosity into uh, longer runs and shorter runs. And really, the runs of homozygosity do have a bimodal distribution in the genome where it's possible to identify some of them as being uh, in a shorter class of, of ROH and some as being in a longer class. And here, what we're looking at from left to right are populations ordered geographically. And uh, on the y-axis is uh, runs of homozygosity, the fraction of the human genome that sits in these uh, ROH, um, particularly in ROH uh, that are of the shorter type. So the lowest level uh, is in African populations, followed by populations of the Middle East, uh, Europe, and Central Asia, uh, then another jump up to uh, East Asian populations, and then the populations at the farthest distance uh, from the ancient out of Africa uh, migration, uh, Native American populations and Pacific Islanders, uh, have the highest level uh, of these uh, shorter ROH. So this particular pattern uh, is a signature of the out of Africa migration, uh, the fraction of the genome that lies uh, in regions of the genome that are homozygous by descent, uh, but uh, uh, shorter regions. If we look at longer runs of homozygosity, there's a very different pattern. Longer runs of homozygosity are the runs of homozygosity that reflect consanguinity within the population. And what you can see is that uh, the uh, yellow uh, Middle Eastern populations, uh, Central Asian populations, mostly here, uh, Central and South Asian populations, a lot from Pakistan, and some of these Native American populations that uh, are really very tiny tribes and consanguineous marriages uh, can't be avoided uh, within, uh, within uh, some of these groups. Uh, so uh, the longer runs of homozygosity much more reflect this cultural practices uh, of consanguinity uh, than uh, the shorter runs of homozygosity. So we have a, a distinctive uh, signature of these different uh, uh, kinds of processes. So um, our interest uh, uh, has uh, recently been in trying to understand what we can learn about runs of homozygosity in relation to Jewish population genetics. So this is an investigation about population history uh, using uh, runs of homozygosity. Uh, has uh, been uh, a PhD project of Jonathan King. So, uh, as Harry mentioned, uh, you know, we've done some studies on, on Jewish population genetics. This is one from uh, Mark Kopelman, who will be coming to the meeting uh, a bit later. Uh, and uh, uh, what she looked at was uh, genetic relationships uh, among populations. Here, um, uh, there's a group of, of populations, uh, non Jewish. Uh, populations from the Middle East uh, and from Europe. And uh, each uh, of a series of about 100 individuals is represented here as a thin vertical line uh, partitioned uh, into different colors. And each of those colors uh, represents a cluster. Uh, so individuals are grouped uh, by their genetic similarity uh, in such a manner that uh, individuals uh, that have a high degree of similarity end up in the same cluster. And what you can see is that a lot of the Jewish populations uh, all have this uh, uh, purple uh, component of the genome uh, reflecting ancestry uh, in a shared uh, uh, genetic uh, cluster. Uh, and that that's distinctive from uh, the other clusters uh, in uh, this set of populations. Uh, so this is a smaller uh, one of these kinds of studies. Uh, Daron and Harry uh, have both done uh, very, very large uh, studies. Uh, we collaborated with Theron on, on one of these that, that looked at a much larger set of populations from around uh, the Middle East, uh, Europe, uh, Caucasus region, uh, and so on. And this is the data set that underlies uh, the runs of homozygosity in Jewish populations that I'll show you in the next few slides. Uh, so what we're looking at here is uh, shorter runs of homozygosity ordered uh, by population uh, for about 140 populations. Uh, world. Uh, as we saw before, the African populations have the lowest level uh, for uh, runs of homozygosity that are shorter. Uh, Native American Pacific Islander populations are at the top. And uh, the Jewish populations uh, shown in light blue are very much mixed in uh, with other populations in uh, the Middle East, uh, Central Asia, uh, Europe, uh, Caucasus region, 
uh, really a lot of Western Asia uh, and Europe have very similar levels uh, in terms of home sagacity. Uh, and this is the signature of the ancient out of Africa migrations, uh, indicating that the Jewish populations uh, traced the same kinds of really quite ancient events, you know, on the order of 20, 30, 40, 50,000 years ago uh, as other populations uh, in uh, the general region. So that's the shorter runs of homo sagacity. Uh, so this is another representation of the shorter runs of homo sagacity uh, in the same way I showed you before. Uh, but if we compare it to the long runs of homo sagacity, uh, what we see is that the Jewish uh, groups uh, here in the Marku again uh, are much more similar uh, to the Middle Eastern populations, uh, some of the Pakistani populations, and other populations from Central Asia, uh, than they are, say, uh, to European uh, groups. Uh, the level of uh, high, uh, long runs of homo sagacity uh, that likely reflect uh, recent consanguinity is much more similar uh, to the Middle Eastern uh, and Central uh, and South Asian uh, populations. And here's another uh, representation of this plot um, of long runs of homo sagacity. Uh, you can see uh, the Jewish populations in light blue, each of one of these different light blue lines uh, represents a uh, different group. I want to point out uh, the Samaritan population here uh, uh, has uh, long runs of homo sagacity, one of the highest levels of consanguinity of any population uh, any, anywhere in the world. The only few that are higher are these uh, few uh, tribes uh, in South America that uh, uh, have the added effect of, of multiple bottlenecks in the population history. Uh, so the longer runs of, of homo sagacity uh, uh, in Jewish populations are, are substantial uh, and uh, relatively large compared to a lot of other uh, populations uh, from, uh, from Europe uh, as well as um, other places in, in other parts of the world. So to try to understand uh, consanguinity in Jewish populations, uh, this is where the 1961 uh, meeting comes in. Uh, we found this remarkable paper uh, from 1960 uh, by Elizabeth Goldschmidt, uh, who was one of the organizers of that 1961 meeting. And uh, what they did in that study uh, was uh, they went to uh, hospitals uh, from about 1955 to 1957, um, uh, sampling uh, for each uh, newborn baby in about eight hospitals in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and, and Haifa. Uh, asking uh, the mothers of newborn babies about, uh, about their families, about consanguinity in their families, about um, which populations they were from, uh, and really recording uh, a remarkable data set. Uh, anybody here was born in 1955 to 1957 in Israel, there's a pretty good chance uh, that their mother uh, was, was in that study. Uh, it was a, at least a double digit uh, percentage of, of all births uh, during those years in Israel. And uh, here's the, the table uh, from this paper. Uh, we can see here our, our populations of origin uh, and uh, uh, numbers of, numbers of uh, people sampled, uh, numbers of first cousin marriages, uh, uh, uncle niece, uh, total consanguineous marriages, and uh, overall uh, rates of consanguinity uh, in the various populations. Uh, so uh, from these data, uh, we have a measurement of uh, consanguineous unions that we can use to compare against uh, what's actually observed in the genome. So this is purely based on demographic survey data. Now we have the actual evidence of the consanguinity uh, in uh, the genomes of individuals from these same populations. Okay, so uh, we computed the inbreeding coefficients from the levels of consanguinity uh, just uh, using uh, the types of relationships uh, that, were, that were tabulated, and that's an example uh, for one population, uh, first cousin marriages, couple niece marriages, and then uh, more distant relationships. Uh, we get a, an estimate of an inbreeding coefficient for each population, which is an overall uh, measure of consanguinity, uh, and do that for each of the populations that overlap between the data uh, collected by their own. Uh, and, uh, and then we can compare the inbreeding coefficients uh, to the levels of homozygosity. And first I'll show uh, the shorter runs of homozygosity, which as I've said, reflect ancient migrations rather than consanguinity. And you can really see that in the plot. Here's uh, inbreeding coefficients on the x-axis. Uh, total length of short runs of homozygosity is relatively constant uh, with the inbreeding uh, coefficient uh, not substantially affected by level of consanguinity uh, in the population. Uh, here are the nine populations. 
uh, each individual is plotted and then there's a, a letter symbol for the, uh, the population average. Now compare the shorter runs of homozygosity to the long runs of homozygosity. And we see in the long runs of homozygosity uh, quite a significant effect of uh, the inbreeding coefficient on the overall uh, length of genome uh, that sits in long runs of homozygosity uh, in these populations uh, with the highest values uh, in the Iranian and Iraqi populations uh, and um, a very high correlation uh, coefficient uh, and, and statistically significant. So the long runs of homozygosity are uh, very much predicted uh, by uh, the pedigree in, in inbreeding coefficient measured uh, in 1955 to 1957. And what's so interesting about this is, uh, as uh, Professor Libby remarked, um, the, the, the patterns, the demographic patterns have changed quite a bit uh, in Israel since that time. And even in the 1960 paper, and there's another page from the uh, 1961 conference volume, uh, what, what the researchers were most interested in was, you know, one of the things that they did was they asked the mothers about, you know, the, the babies were all born in 1955 and 1957, but the, the mothers uh, were, um, uh, might have been married over uh, many years before uh, 1955 and 1957. So they sorted the data by the age, uh, uh, by the time that the, the mothers uh, got married. And they saw that the marriages were already declining in consanguinity. Uh, so here's, here's time and here's uh, rate of consanguinous marriage. They were already de declining uh, during the course of, of the study uh, for babies born uh, during the same year. Uh, so, uh, so, so the signature of, of consanguinity was, was in decline uh, already. Um, and this was uh, 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 repeated in a study, a report in 2004, uh, that took the same study design as that 1960 study, uh, here using data from 1991. Uh, and here's measurements of consanguinity in the same population groups. And you can see that in most of the populations, it's quite a bit uh, less than, than in 1956. So we have this situation where uh, the consequently has been in substantial uh, decline, but it still has a very strong effect on what signatures uh, are seen in the genome. And if we use these numbers, we wouldn't see nearly as uh, good of a pattern uh, in relationship to long runs of homozygosity uh, as with the, the earlier numbers from 1956. Uh, so um, what that's saying to me is that uh, despite, despite the fact that uh, the, the demographic patterns, the nature of, of marriages uh, has been changing, uh, that whatever uh, patterns were in place uh, you know, six decades ago uh, have had a, a pretty substantial influence on what uh, genomes look like uh, and what the long runs of homozygosity look like uh, in the genomes uh, six decades uh, later. Whatever patterns were in place uh, in 1956 must have been ongoing for many generations prior to that uh, in order to produce such a robust signal that's still visible uh, today. Uh, and uh, I think that speaks to a lot of what the conference is about, uh, that uh, genomes uh, have a history and that that history is uh, relevant to uh, both to the history of populations as well as to uh, what kinds of um, techniques can be used to uncover disease genes, uh, what, uh, uh, kinds of uh, predictions can be made about uh, individual uh, genomes um, uh, on the basis of uh, uh, measurements of, uh, of the genotypes. So to summarize, um, I told you about short runs of homozygous and how they're uh, comparable in Jewish populations to other populations of the Middle East uh, and Europe. They record si similar signatures of ancient migrations uh, reflecting similar ancient uh, migration history to other European and Middle Eastern populations. Whereas longer runs of homozygosity are relatively high in Jewish populations and uh, have a remarkable uh, uh, accord with data collected on consanguinity uh, in the 1950s. And uh, I think this means that the agreement uh, between the demographic inbreeding uh, and genomic uh, estimates of uh, runs of homozygosity uh, suggests uh, that uh, those patterns of consanguinity, uh, at least the relative patterns, uh, relative levels of consanguinity across populations, may have been uh, maintained uh, over uh, many generations uh, prior uh, to uh, the gathering of the data. Uh, so, uh, thanks very much.
Okay, excellent questions from Walter Bodner. Um, so uh, the first question is about the, the definition of short and long runs of homozygosity. Uh, and uh, that's a key question. Uh, so uh, to answer the technical question in a technical way, uh, we've uh, fit a three-component Gaussian mixture model uh, to the runs of homozygosity lengths. And uh, that number of components, uh, three components, is actually estimated uh, from the data. Uh, it, um, uh, uh, subdivides the runs of homozygosity to three lengths, uh, short, medium, and long. And I'll skip the medium for, for, for the purposes of the talk. Uh, and, um, uh, and there's very strong support that three components is the right number of components. The medium ones look much more like the short ones than, than like the long ones. Uh, in each population, there's a different breakpoint between uh, where the short uh, and the long are demarcated, but um, the breakpoints are, are relatively consistent uh, across populations. Uh, in the sense that uh, the short to medium breakpoints are always shorter than the medium to long breakpoints uh, in different, po different populations. Um, uh, and um, uh, the second question uh, was about uh, variability uh, in uh, the lengths of runs of homozygosity uh, in the, the long runs. And this is typical in every population that has uh, the long runs of homozygosity, uh, that there's a lot of variability across individuals within the population. And I think this suggests that you know, in populations that have a lot of consanguinity, um, there are subsets of the population that practice the consanguinity and the subsets of the population that, that don't seem to practice the, the consanguinity uh, all that much, uh, since some individuals have really very high values uh, of long runs of homozygosity, suggesting multiple rounds of consanguinity over many generations, uh, whereas other, other individuals are, are much more at the lower, the lower end of the spectrum. Um, so, the signature of uh, a high amount of consequence uh, marriage is not only in the mean of these distributions, but also in the variance. Uh, maybe one quick question and one quick answer. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a quick question. Why is it because the uh, Uh, excellent question. Uh, so, um, so the, um, the the only data on that come from this two, 2004 study, uh, which uh, was looking at consanguinity uh, in Jewish populations at measured in 1991, and they saw a very significant uh, effect uh, of um, uh, degree of uh, religious participation uh, in uh, levels of consanguinity uh, in uh, populations that they looked at. Uh, it's it's not I, I don't have it in the in the, in the slide. Uh, it's it's in the paper. Good, thank you very much.